I completed the error handling chores that I had in the Modbus TCP to SQL Server solution, and we bumped it up a rev to ModServe 9. Um, if you go to my URL on my GitHub, you'll find uh, that the description of the application has changed slightly. And I still have the uh, IEEE 754 values coming into this story in. Modbus TCP devices now gracefully handle closing my service if uh, they can't be discovered. Also the SQL Server itself, wherever your instance is located, if the connection string is wrong or if the communication is down for any reason, the app's going to uh, gracefully uh, close down uh, based on that as well. So everything seems to be pretty stable. And uh, let's take a look in Visual Studio about how the app works. It's still the same basic app as it was before. It was very stable the way I had it. However, it was not handling uh, errors very well. So I built a threading model in it. And uh, that's given it a lot better performance and also given it uh, a lot better stability. Open up the solution here. Normally I push it and sync it up with the GitHub account, uh, but uh, I do work on it locally. And I use a Modbus simulator to uh, handle the product. In this case it's called uh, Mod R Sim, And uh, it just pretends to be the hardware device. Uh, the 4000 to 4096 registers that I am using, the holding registers that I'm using in my Modbus devices, such as the gizmos on buildagizmo.com, are mapped very easily into the simulator and I can use it to read and write values. Uh, first 96 registers are being read and written to the database so uh, I'll add a few uh, values in here and we can just pretend that this is process data. You know, temperature, flow, speed, acceleration, anything that we're doing. Uh, I'll minimize that and go into the uh, Modbus app itself and just go ahead and start it and let's see what we got. Uh, this is the uh, basic UI and I can change the sample rates anything I like. Uh, it does go down to uh, one sample per second which means one full row of data of all 96 registers with a timestamp will go to the SQL server every second if necessary. Uh, I tend to go up to 5 to 10 seconds on big factory jobs uh, just so that I can collect the data robustly and report on it through the SQL server so that I don't have to build any fancy Modbus gateways uh, which are difficult especially in the cloud uh, to get my data directly from the devices so instead I built this historian product so that people with Windows computers can connect their devices and a SQL server and basically historically archive their data in a professional manner. Uh, these are all standard devices. Modbus TCP is standard protocol. SQL Server from Microsoft is the de facto standard in the industry. So I'll change the sample rate to 10 seconds just so I can. And uh, the IP address in this case is my local host, uh, which is what is being run in this simulator. It's running on the local host and listening at the local host level. Uh, the port's 502, that's the standard TCP port got a little feedback bar and I can put in a connection string which I also populate with a default connection string to the typical local DB instance on a person's computer. That way if you go to uh, the web and want to build this product from scratch basically just look for SQL Server Express Microsoft and you're gonna find a free database solution that you can download from here choose the Express Edition because that's the free one and it works just fine. Here is the local DB MSI installer and that's the one you want. Um, this local DB is the name or I should say the default name of the database engine itself. So I've left in the defaults, this connection string is not standardized but you'll always find that you have to massage a connection string a bit until you get it right and in this case this is the correct string for finding a local instance of my SQL Express database. In this case I have an initial catalog or initial table of history and uh, that helps me get into my data. Now we can start the server and if everything's going fine it's just going to say that my server is connected. Very simple service. 
gracefully shuts down if there's any problems with communication or otherwise. Um, very nice nifty feature of Visual Studio is that I can go directly into the SQL Server from here and find my local DB instance, which in this case is this one, MS SQL Local DB. Again, that's the database instance that's right up here. And I can use Visual Studio to dig in to my history database, which in this case has a history table. I can view the data. Comes up by default as a thousand rows. Um, I always like to click on all right away because I'm going to go over a thousand rows even if I'm doing sampling at every 10 seconds. 96 registers across. There's actually a total of 115 registers coming through because uh, I'm converting a bunch of the values, a bunch of the integer 16-bit uh, unsigned integer Modbus values into floating point registers. Uh, I do a number of double precision and a number of quadruple precision IEEE 754 registers. Uh, adding that into the story and so that it can be reported on with the natural numbers that are expected from the process. For example, if you've got a temperature controller that's high resolution, you're going to be bringing in with several, you're going to bring in those values via a Modbus gateway in several registers. In the case of possibly two or four registers are going to describe the temperature at any one time. Since it's a high resolution temperature, it's going to have a numerator to denominator, it's going to be a big number and that number can be translated much more easily into real dashboards and real visuals via an IEEE 754 register of that value at that particular time. So this is set up for good dashboard reporting from uh, different types of interfaces. Maybe I'll show a few before the uh, video's up. Anyway, I'm down to, uh, I have all my ro rows, and uh, if I drop down here, I get down to uh, the time. In this case, it's 448, and I'm seeing stuff from about 446, so it looks like it has been grabbing my values. Let's see if it does see those values. Let's go ahead and change them, and say that all of a sudden the temperature has dropped to below freezing on my refrigerator. <laughs> or whatever I'm connected to and then uh, let's give it about 10 seconds because again it's sampling every 10 seconds and uh, we'll do a refresh and we should see the new temperature data down in our registers and there they are already coming in in fact we even see that as the data gets read and written to it's going to stay very stable between one sample and the next so I can literally read and write from either the device or from local products such as my local clients and in this case the server is simply historically archiving the data in my SQL Server database. Take a quick look at uh, the uh, SQL Server itself or actually first we'll stop the server and uh, notice it gives me a graceful little uh, message nowadays and that's a lot better off than what we had before I'm going to go into, uh, in this case, uh, SQL Server 2014's local DB uh, Server Management Studio product. This is an additional download. I believe it comes on the MSI for SQL Server 2014, but I do not think it comes standard in SQL Server 2016. So if you bring down, if you download the SQL Server 2016 Express Edition, you may or may not get the SQL Server Management Studio product, which is this, this client product that you can work with outside of Visual Studio. A lot of folks, of course, are not programmers, so they want to work in the SQL Server environment that they're used to. So I'll connect to the database. In this case, uh, it's the same basic interface as before. If I head down into my history database, I'll find tables. In this case, a history table itself. I'll select the top thousand rows. In this case, the way that queries are done is a little bit differently, so I'll just say I'll select the top hundred thousand rows and I'll re-execute the query down here and notice I'm still getting my data every 10 seconds and uh, it's a very snappy product for how simple it is it works very nicely and I'm very pleased with it and that's why I'm sharing it with the community so uh, let's see what else I want to show off uh, there's a Power BI product and I have not started building dashboards for my Modbus uh, SQL uh, historian yet 
but it's a great product that can be embedded in websites and it shows dashboard uh, values uh, from all the uh, reports that we want to pre-build uh, for this historian. Now the idea is that you use your smartphone typically to look at real-time values and change set points such as changing the temperature that uh, turns on fans or uh, changing a light intensity. Then when you get historical archives of data over time, say six months worth of data of how long your lights have run, how long your fans have run, you know, how long water pumps have uh, pumped water, then you can go in and build uh, reports that are giving you insight into how well your device performed. So reports from Power BI are kind of like looking at the long term or looking at the, the uh, bigger picture of your data and then the smartphone apps that we typically work with on buildagizmo.com are the ones where you're literally controlling the equipment you know in real time so there are two different ways of dealing with your data one is kind of a real-time solution and the other one is for building reports and the reports need a historical gathering place in this case from this Modbus device into the SQL Server to gather the data so that you can report on it and so that the charts work correctly. And that is pretty much the product. Uh, let's see how Build a Gizmo shows it off a little bit. This is more along the lines of what you would have on the uh, smartphone app. Um, it's actually literally letting you control the product. This is the programming environment that comes with every gizmo that we sell. Um, that's kind of our uh, value added or our differentiating uh, uh, aspect of our product compared to uh, other products uh, that don't come with the programming software ahead of time. And uh, we built a lot of uh, prototypes with the product. We've tested a lot of sensors. We've made sure that this historian product works. Um, pricing is still going all over the place because we've now built a mini product and a pro level product. So there are uh, a number of different products that we can do. Uh, uh, we've also built a uh, high amperage relay uh, peripheral so that if you're running devices that are outside the average consumer space, you know, outside the average garage shop or the average family room, uh, when you're building into big factory process, you need larger uh, current through your devices to be able to run larger lights, larger fans, things of that nature. And uh, so we built a number, actually one or two different peripherals to deal with uh, higher current or to deal with uh, things such as uh, uh, isolated outputs on the analogs uh, that go into uh, uh, factory process gear to run blowers or to run big... Uh, uh, heaters and, and uh, coolers, uh, chillers and things like that. So this is an industrial product, but it's uh, made for the average consumer to use as well. It's very simple, and uh, we like it a lot. I, uh, I hope that gives a basic idea of how the uh, Modbus uh, server works, and uh, that's a way that we're going to be reporting on our uh, data from the gizmos. Hope you liked it. Thanks.